guys and welcome to today's video. So in today's video, I'm going to be creating an all drugstore bridal makeup look. So I really hope that this is helpful for those of you getting married on a budget and doing your own makeup. So if you want to see how I got this look, then just keep watching. I'm going to go ahead and start out with primer. I'm going to use this Revolution Pro Hydra Matte Primer because I want something that's both going to plump up and hydrate my skin as well as something that's going to help control the oil a little bit. Primer is definitely something that you can play around with depending on your skin concerns. If you have a lot of redness, you could use a correcting primer with a green tint. If you want a really smoothing primer, you could use that and pair it with other primers. This is kind of like a perfect place to really mix and match for your skin type so that the rest of the makeup lays really nicely on top. So I put that kind of all over, but I'm also gonna go in with this Physicians Formula Spotlight Primer because this gives such a beautiful radiant finish and I want that on all of the high points of my face just to start building the look that we're going for. With bridal makeup and any makeup that needs to last a long time, layers, small, small layers will be your best friend. Both really, really great primers. I think you could go in all over with this one if you have drier skin, but I get a little bit shiny. so. I don't want something that's gonna make my whole face shiny. I want something that's just gonna embellish the areas of my face that I want to embellish. So next up is foundation. I think the two foundations I was between, no surprise, were the Catrice foundation and the number seven Beautifully Matte. I'm gonna go with this Catrice one for this video, but you couldn't go wrong with either. This is in the shade Nude Beige. I'm just gonna put some here on the back of my hand and use my Real Techniques buffing brush to really stipple this in. Again, you don't wanna go in with like a huge glob of foundation. I have barely anything on my brush and I'm just distributing this evenly all over my skin, really pushing it into the skin. If you just go in with a super thick layer right off the bat, your makeup is gonna be sitting on top of your skin rather than actually melting into your skin. And that's the kind of makeup that doesn't last, that gets really shiny and that transfers really badly. So by working in thin layers, your makeup's gonna last longer, it's gonna be transfer proof, which is really important for all the hugs you're gonna be giving, and it's just gonna look so much more natural. The real challenge with bridal makeup is it's like a cross between stage makeup and real life everyday makeup because it's one of the few scenarios where you're gonna be photographed a lot, you're gonna be pretty much up on a stage um, when you're saying your vows and everything and you want your makeup to be noticeable and look good from a distance and in photographs, but you also are going to be talking to people face to face and obviously seeing your partner face to face. So it needs to look good both from far away and up close. So there's this really delicate balance between really packing it on so that it shows up in photographs and keeping it natural enough to where you actually still look good and not cakey in real life. So that's one layer down. I have some breakouts because I am nearing that time of the month. So I'm gonna go in with a second layer. Again, a very thin layer. It may seem counterintuitive not to just go straight in with all the product that you think you need. But trust me, it just will not last the way that working in tiny, tiny layers will last. Something else I would recommend is having a sponge handy. And now that I've gone in with two layers, I'm just gonna go in with this sponge and just dab this on top. And this is really gonna press in that foundation, make it part of the skin, but it's also going to soak up any excess product to really prevent that cakey look. And I'm just gonna take the tiny bit that's left on my hand and pull this down my neck just a little bit, just to kind of blend between my face and my neck, but you're not gonna wanna put too much product, especially depending on the cut of your dress. Okay, so that is the foundation down. Obviously, I still have imperfections showing through, but I'm a big proponent of letting concealer do its job. You don't need to go in to your concealer with a flawless base because then what are you concealing? You wanna build up your foundation to where your skin tone looks generally evened out, but if you have specific areas of concern, you're gonna wanna address that with concealer rather than your entire face being caked on with makeup, you can really pack on the product wherever you specifically need it. On blemishes, on like around my nose, I always get red, but I don't need the same level of coverage through my whole face that I do on my problem areas, if that makes any sense. So for concealer, first I'm gonna go in with my Maybelline Fit Me, just my go-to concealer. 
I've relied on this for years and it never steers me wrong. That's something else I would say, don't like try a brand new foundation or skincare routine or concealer on your wedding day. Go with products that you know work so well that you've used a hundred times. It is not the day to experiment. I'm gonna hold off on doing my under eye concealer until I do my eye makeup, just in case there's anything I wanna clean up. If you wanna go in with a really intense eye makeup look, I would recommend starting with your eye makeup. Mine is not one that's gonna have a lot of fallout or is super dark, so I felt fine going in with my foundation beforehand. Definitely go through the steps at your comfort level. So now I'm gonna go in with my brows. I'm gonna use this e.l.f. Lock On Liner and Brow Gel with this small angled brush. Again, this is a product that just never does me wrong. It's so long lasting. Total dupe for Anastasia. And this shade is just like a perfect match for me. It's not too cool, it's not too warm gives my brows the definition without making them look drawn on. And I'm just gonna go through and blend with a spoolie as I go. This one is the Perfusion Angled Eyebrow. I don't like the brush, but I really like this spoolie. Nice and firm, if that makes sense. And I'm really just filling in my natural brows. I'm not going crazy with shaping my brows. And I will say this probably multiple times throughout this video. I would avoid doing anything that's super trendy in makeup right now because a lot of trends, you know, run their course pretty quickly and you don't want to do something trendy on your wedding day. Obviously, it's your wedding day. Do whatever feels right to you. But for me personally, I wanted my makeup to be classic and timeless. I really just wanted to look like the best version of myself. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna go in with my L'Oreal Infallible Concealer to both make sure that my brow is nice and defined, as well as to kind of cover up all the veins and stuff that I don't want showing on my lid. And that will be our base for eyeshadow. So I'm just tracing along the natural bottom of my brow, and it sort of just gives you that just waxed look. And now I'm just going to start blending that down all over my lid. I'm sorry, there's like a torrential downpour right now. I hope you guys can't hear that. All right, now I'm going to take just the tiniest bit of translucent powder. I'm using the Wet n Wild translucent powder. Just a tiny, tiny bit all over my lid space. And this will prevent the concealer from creasing and give you that really nice base to work with. All right, I'm gonna go back with that big fluffy brush that I used to set my lid, which is the Alter Ego number no. three brush. And I'm gonna take the bronzer I'm gonna be using. This is the Milani Silk Matte Bronzer. And I am going to put this through my crease. The bronzer that you're gonna be using or the blush that you're gonna be using are both really good choices for your transition color. Not only are they usually a pretty neutral shade when you just wash them all over, the crease, but it also kind of ties your whole makeup look together. And we're gonna be going back in with concealer on the lower lash line, so don't be afraid to kind of blend this out pretty far. All right, and next for eyeshadow, I would say there are two colors I would recommend depending on your taste. They are both the Revlon Color Stay eyeshadows. These just don't budge. These will not crease on you. They will last all day, all night long and I just trust them so much. They're super creamy and blendable, and they give you that perfect level of shimmer where you are that blushing, glowing bride, but it's not like a super glittery lid, so I feel like they're the perfect choice for bridal makeup. I love the shade 730. This is kind of like a pinkier shade, and I also love the shade 710, which is a little bit more on the bronzy side. I am gonna go with 710, the bronzy shade, with this ColourPop blending brush. And I'm just gonna put this all over my lid. Oh, how gorgeous is that? And I'm gonna blend it up a little bit through my crease. I don't want solid shimmer in my crease, but I wanna make my lid space look as large as possible. Right now I'm gonna take a smaller blending brush. I love this one, again, by Alter Ego. This is brush number one. And I'm actually gonna take my Retro Paradise palette by e.l.f. I love this brown shade. It's not too dark, it's not too light and it's so blendable. This is the shade Sandy Bum, but literally any matte brown shade will work for this look. And I'm just gonna further define the crease with this, just a little bit darker than the bronzer shade we used before. And again, don't be afraid to bring this out pretty far. Again, just slowly building with layers of product. You're not depositing 
all the product at once. I'm gonna take a little bit of this darker brown shade, just a touch of that shade. Really tap off the excess here and put that just on this outer V. You wanna really define the eye. Again, you want it to look good from far away and in pictures. We wanna keep it nice and soft. If you have difficulty with blending out darker colors like this, if you're newer to that and you find it difficult, I'd recommend using one brush to deposit the product and using a clean blending brush to blend it out because you can build it up a lot more slowly at your own pace by using that strategy. All right, next for eyeliner, I'm gonna use this Milani Stay Put Eyeliner. I don't love the look of a solid liquid line for bridal makeup. I think a much softer approach that still gives you the level of definition that you're looking for is using a pencil. To give it that smoky, effortless effect, you're just gonna wanna take it and put little dots as absolutely as close as you can get to your lash line. Just start dotting it in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a straight line. In fact, it won't be. But just get it in those lashes. And then take a eyeliner pencil. I love this one by Essence. This is the Essence Precise Eyeliner Brush. And I'm gonna use the black shade called Nightlife in this Retro Paradise palette and use this to bring the line together and smudge it out a little bit. And then I'm just gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So now I'm gonna go in with my under eye concealer, finally cover up my dark circles. I'm gonna mix in a little bit of the Maybelline Fit Me with the L'Oreal Infallible. I just wanna thin out the Infallible a little bit while also brightening up the Maybelline Fit Me. Take this same contour brush, and as I'm blending up, I'm making sure that I'm not totally slicing off the outer edge of the eyeshadow. Sometimes I see people, when they're trying to define that outer corner, they go a little bit too vertical, but you really just want to extend your lower lash line just like this, so it it goes out more than it goes up, if that makes sense. And I have those two concealers mixed on the back of my hand, so I'm just gonna take this ColourPop blending brush, this is a clean one, and deposit the product anywhere else that I want it with a little bit more accuracy than I can with the contour brush. Making sure I'm brightening where I want to brighten, building it up a little bit right here because I've got some serious dark circles. And I'm using my sponge to blend that out. All right, next I'm gonna go in with a couple of cream products because again, we wanna work in layers. So I'm gonna take my Flower Beauty Heat Wave Bronzing Essence and I'm gonna apply this to the places where I'm going to bronze up because as your bronzer fades, you wanna have something below that bronzer that's gonna still give that same effect because again, the more layers you've got, the better. If you've got a bronzer below your bronzer below your bronzer, even if the top layer fades, you've got that up. So I just wanna make sure that even before I powder, my face has some definition outside of the foundation, which makes it look pretty flat and one dimensional. All right, now for a base for the blush, I'm gonna go in with this Flower Beauty Blush Balm, and this is in the shade Cinnamon. I love this stuff. And just apply this where I'm gonna be applying blush. To create a blush backup plan. And I'm just using one of those BH Cosmetics brushes. This is brush number four. And then again, just melt everything into the skin by pushing it in with a sponge. And this will also soak up excess product. Because we have so many layers, you don't want thick layers, and this prevents you from creating thick layers. It keeps them nice and thin. All right, it's finally time to powder, and I'm gonna be using two different powders. I'm gonna go in with my number seven Lift and Luminate Powder in the shade Light for underneath my eyes, and then I'm gonna go in with my Wet n Wild Loose Setting Powder for the rest of my face. Before I do that, I'm gonna make sure I don't have any creases that have formed while I was doing the rest of my face, because you don't wanna set a crease with powder, because that'll make sure that the crease sticks around. All right, I'm gonna use my e.l.f. blush brush to set underneath my eyes. And then my Wet n Wild brush, it's just a big fluffy powder brush 
to apply this wet and wild loose powder and I apply a lot of this I'm not gonna lie this really keeps my oils at bay and it doesn't look cakey even if you apply a lot. All right, now on to powder products. This is the Milani Silky Matte Bronzing Powder. This is in the shade 2, Sunkissed. And this is the BH Cosmetics. This is the Rose Quartz Collection, and this is number 2. I just cleaned all of my brushes. If you follow me on Instagram, I literally just cleaned all my brushes, and I am getting them all dirty again for this video. But you guys are worth it. I'm just going to blend this all over where I want to look sun-kissed and bronzer and blush are really easy things to go back in with more so just go in with a light layer and then reevaluate once the rest of your makeup is done for blush I'm going to use the elf primer infused blush in the shade always cheeky I love this blush if there's any day you're gonna go in with a little bit more blush than usual probably gonna be your wedding day and then for highlight, I've mentioned this before, if I got married again, this is the one I would use. And it's the Revlon Skin Lights Illuminator in the shade 300. Such a gorgeous, gorgeous highlight. And I want it to look nice and candle it, not super intense. So this is the perfect product for that. A little bit on my nose, above my lip, and just go back over everything with that sponge. We are getting there. All right, for mascara, I would highly recommend, I don't have one that's ready to use, so I'm gonna use the L'Oreal Age Perfect Mascara, but if I was getting married tomorrow, I would use the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Waterproof version. That's one of the best waterproof mascara formulas. But I'm gonna be using this one because it's actually like eight o'clock at night and I'm not going to a wedding. I want a nice, even coat no big clumps because we are going to be going in with lashes. All right, so for lashes, I'm going to be using the Ardell Individual Lashes. I'm going to mix in some light and some medium because I like the look of really nice fluttery lashes. I'm not a huge strip lash person and not all of our lashes are the exact same length. So I think switching up the length of the individual lashes gives them a lot more natural of an effect. I'm going to use this Duo Adhesive. This is the one that dries black. There's also one that dries clear. If you are gonna go in with a strip lash, I'd recommend a clear one. But if you're gonna go in with these individuals, I'd go with black. The main difference between individual lashes and the strip lashes are that you are, when you're applying a strip, you're applying it to your lash line. When you're applying individual lashes, you're attaching them to your actual lashes. So that's your goal, is to get as close to the lash line as possible but to attach it to your actual lash. Think of like lash extensions. That's essentially what we're creating. Takes a little bit longer, but I just think it looks so much better. I just dipped it in the glue and you can wait a minute for it to dry. It is a little bit easier if you do, but I am impatient. So I just start popping them on and make sure I keep looking down because I know they're not fully on there yet. I'm going in with a medium and here's another medium. And we're not trying to create a perfect line of lashes because if we were doing that, it might, we might as well go in with a strip lash. Just kind of want to disperse them throughout the lash line. The thing I love about these is you can constantly stop and reevaluate and look and see, okay, do I want a little bit more volume here? Do I want a little bit more volume there? You can create your own perfect lash. Okay, so I'm happy with this side. Now I'm gonna go and quickly do the other side. All right, and while those are drying for a minute, I'm gonna go in on my lower lash line and then we'll finish up the lashes. So first I'm going to take that eyeliner brush again and the black shade from the Retro Paradise palette and line my lower lashes like halfway across. I'm not trying to have a super intense line. I just want my lower lash line to be as defined as my upper lash line. All right, now I'm going to take a pencil brush and go in with that sandy bum shade, the lighter brown and just soften that and blend it out. And then just apply some mascara to the lower lash line. And this part is totally optional, but I feel like these are dry now. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of mascara through the fake lashes. Just kind of meld them together a little bit with my natural lashes and use that same Milani eyeliner in my upper waterline. Okay, for lips, uh, you know me, I love a good nude lip, but I feel like for your wedding day, you really have to have some color on your lip 
even if it's not a super intense color you need your lip color to really show up in pictures and as great as a nude lip looks in person they don't photograph the best so i'm first going to go in with the essence lip liner in the shade satin mauve all right and for lipstick i'm going to use this l'oreal color rich lipstick in passionate pink which seems very fitting for a wedding day it's like a matte lip color it's really long lasting i would recommend blotting and reapplying a couple times just to really work up that stain on the actual day but then topping it off with the Maybelline Baddest Beige. It's not a gloss, it's not going to transfer onto your partner too badly, but it's gonna give your lips a nice, luscious, shiny look rather than a flat matte look. Okay, I'm going to set my brows with the e.l.f. Wow Brow. Just brush them up. And this is the time where I would take a look and just see what you feel like is missing. For me, I feel like an inner corner highlight is missing and a brow highlight. So I'm gonna take my Milani highlighter. I'm gonna use this kind of softer pink side and give myself a little bit of a glow in the inner corner. And then a little bit on my brow bone as well. Now that I have the lip color on, I feel like I need a little bit more color on my cheeks. So I'm just gonna add in a little bit more blush and now I'm gonna go change into something that's a little bit more bridal and I'll be right back and just to finish things off I'm gonna use my Milani make it last setting spray this stuff is amazing so that is the finished look I really hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up it really helps out my channel don't forget to subscribe while you are here and I'll see you guys in my next one